Thank you everyone once again for joining us for another edition of the All State Soccer Show. I'm Camila Gonzalez and I am honored to be back once again, this time chatting with a Manchester United legend. I'm sure everyone back home is just as excited as I am to welcome Andy Cole to the All State Soccer Show. Andy, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, you have had a remarkable career, 20 years as a professional footballer, six years with Manchester United. You're now an ambassador for the club. You won with the trouble with them. You were key to winning eight trophies, third all-time goal scorer for the Premier League. The list goes on and on. Is there a specific moment from your career, looking back, that you still think about with disbelief? Um, I, I'll be honest, I'm most, most probably all my career. You know, I, I think you, you go into the game wanting to achieve things. And fortunate for me, I've been um, very, very fortunate that I went on and achieved most things that every player would want to achieve. But I think winning the treble in 99 would always stick with me. Um, it, was, it was such a special last 10 days of the season. It's something that you're never going to forget about. Absolutely. And with that team, I mean, it was a history making team. Your teammates were remarkable. Other than the trouble, what would be another highlight that you remember fondly? Maybe things that we didn't get to see on the pitch or moment that, moments that we didn't necessarily see as viewers. Uh, well, I, the, the crazy thing is, and I think we're all the same, I, I think when, you, when you're away from football, it's naturally, you know, you, you're bringing your kids into the world. And I think to become a father for the first time was, was a great feeling. You know, um, I, don't, I don't think people actually appreciate just what it is. I mean, to become a father for the first time, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. So away from football, you know, I'm, I remember I had to play a game um, and I missed my son's birth. You know, and that, that was something that, I mean, it, it wrangled with me for a little bit. But then I appreciated that I was just trying to do the right things for my family. And I can imagine that would be a very hard moment. It was obviously... Your son's birth. I mean, when you're going through something like that, what's the mental game like? There, there's so many eager youth that are watching this, and perhaps they're not at the point to become fathers, but they will miss, you know, family birthdays or parties or growing up because of their dedication to the sport. Why is that so important? I, I think it's, it's, it's so important because when, when you are or when you become a professional footballer or a professional sportsman, you miss out on so many things. Uh, and I, I always said after that. If I was ever to have another child, I, I wouldn't miss out on, on the second one. So I think the sacrifices we've made during the season or throughout your careers, you know, Christmas is, is not really a thing for fresh, professional footballers. You know, it's just another day. You know, you can just about watch your kids open their presents and you have to work again. You know, so there's, there's many little things that, you know, um, we have to look at and, and sacrifice, you know, for the long game. And we obviously have to talk about the benefits of soccer for young kids. I mean, obviously, as a professional athlete, you've touched on the trophies that you can win and the opportunities that you are given. But as a kid, what are some of the benefits that, I mean, you yourself as a father now can see that the continuation of staying in the sport can give, whether it's fitness, confidence, sportsmanship? I think it gives you everything you've just spoken about there. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think when it comes to being a sportsman, it gives you a sense of purpose as well, you know, because you want to achieve, you know, you want to become a better person, not not just a, a sportsman, but a better individual. Uh, and I, I think for me, I, I've been fortunate enough to travel the world and have the opportunity to do things like this due to what I've done in my career and what I've done when I was younger, you know, and I, I don't think we actually appreciate how far we've gone, you know, to find ourselves in the position that we find ourselves in now. And looking back at your career, you did win the PFA Young Player of the Year Award in England. Can you talk to us about the skill development that was involved in that and, you know, what that meant to you as well? What were you were focused on at the time? Well, well, can I remember that? That was a very long time ago. A very, very long time ago. Um, I, I'd, I'd be very, very surprised uh, when I won it uh, due to the fact that it's, it's voted for by your peers. Now, if your peers believe that you've had a good season and they believe that you're a young emerging talent, you know, which they believed at the time, I was fortunate to win it. And it was a great honour for me. I think when you're growing up, you want to be able to achieve things like that. But, you know, I'm not a selfish in individual. So that, that's an award that was given to me for working amongst my, my teammates. You know, and I'll be brutally honest. I, I think if you're going to give out awards like that, you've got to give everyone an award. 
you know, because without my teammates, I wouldn't have been able to achieve it. You know, but like I said, it's, it's a great honour that I, I did achieve it. But like I said, for me, I'm not a selfish guy. Without my team, I can't have this conversation with you now. I absolutely love that because you have shown an example of partnership and of, of working with teammates. And I think it's such an important example for all the aspiring players back home to really learn from you. I mean, can you touch on the partnership that you had with Dwight York and what that meant for your success at Manchester United and what you hope aspiring players can take away from that because you're not trying to outshine each other. You work together as a team. You have to. Football is, is such a massive, massive team sport. Yeah, I know we're individuals in that, but you've got to work in the team frame. So my partnership with Dwight was, that's what for me personally made it even more special that we're two individuals wanting the best naturally for each another, but for our team as well. And that the way we gelled and the way we complemented each another, that's why so many people talk about it now, because it was all natural. You know, you touched on it there, none of us tried to outdo each another, because after nine, ten months of a season, you all want the same end goal, and that's to win the league. And we were fortunate to do that by working together as a team. And why do you think that partnership with Dwight worked so well? Because um, we're polar opposites. And as, as they say, uh, you know, two people who are not the same, you know, they seem to work out very, very well. Uh, so that, that was me, me and Dwight, you know. We're a bit of a yin and yang, you know, and we were totally, totally opposite. I, I'm, I'm the kind of individual, I, I would try to slip in the back door and Dwight would go straight through the front door and make sure everyone knows that he's there. But that's how it worked between us. You know, he was very much out there and I, I was a very much the introvert. Andy, in your career, it's no secret. There were so many obstacles to overcome. It was not an easy journey to reach the level of success that you did. Was there anyone in your life growing up that really influenced you and made a positive impact towards your attitude, your work ethic and your perseverance? Yeah, for me personally, uh, my parents and my, and my grandfather, I think them coming from uh, Jamaica to uh, England, you know, everything was about hard work, hard work, dedication. And I've, I've taken their work ethic. I think when they left Jamaica to come to England, you know, they knew it was going to be very, very difficult. And I think sometimes in life, when you want to do something, you're going to find it difficult. Whatever you do in life, it's going to be tough. You know, mm -hmm. nothing in life comes easy. So you just got to work very hard at it. And, you know, I've had a lot of positive people around me to help me with that. And you did mention a very hard moment was obviously missing the birth of your son. But is there any challenge looking back in your career that still sticks out to you? And what was that process of overcoming it? Uh, yeah, we 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 all gonna come across obstacles, but that's what life's about. You know, we we all gonna be faced with different challenges. You know, but um, it, it's 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 a tough one because we we all we deal with things in different ways. And I I think I'm I'm the kind of individual I, I just wanna try and work harder, you know, whatever, whatever situation I find myself in, I'll just try and try and work as hard as I can do, you know, because as, as they say, you know, it's, you know, what, what will happen today, tomorrow's a different day, you know, mm -hmm. you know, whatever rut you find yourself in, it won't last. So you just got to work yourself through it. And would you say that would be the best advice, you know, for all the kids that are watching back home to just kind of use that as motivation and fuel to work harder. I mean, especially when maybe they're growing up and people don't believe in them or people are doubting them or they say, you know, you should have a plan B for your career. What what would be that advice that you wish those aspiring players watching could hear? Uh, to be fair, I would agree 100% with the plan B. Because unfortunately, we're not, we're not all going to become professional footballers or professional sportsmen. So plan B, 100%. Um, when I was growing up, there was no plan B. Because I always believed that I was going to do just exactly what I did. Uh, but like I said, you know, we, we, all, we all approach things in a different way. You know, and I, like I said, I, genuinely, I, I, I believe, you know, for me personally, the way I, I dealt with things, you know, was hard work. You know, you've got to work hard, you've got to work hard. But that, that, comes from my, that comes from my family, that comes from my background. You know, it's all about working hard and never giving up. Because ultimately, no one wants to give up on their dream. And my dream was to become a sportsman. I achieved just that. And how important are coaches, teachers, managers, adult figures to look up to for a kid growing up who wants to become a professional? 
I don't think, I think massively. Um, I.e. your school teachers or your coach or whatever. You've got, you've got to try and find a rapport with somebody. You know, sometimes, you, you know, parents are always going to give you everything they've got. You know, but I think whatever you try and do, you're going to, you're going to have to try and find a rapport with someone because ultimately someone else has got to believe in you, not just your parents. If it's your coach, your teacher, whoever it's going to be. And I think they, they give you that added incentive to want to do what you want to do. And even if they're supporting you as well, that makes a big, big plus. And who was that person for you growing up? For me, oh, I had my sports teacher when I was at school. Uh, I had my head a year. You know, I had one of my coaches. So I, I was very, very fortunate. I had all these people um, backing me when that times, you know, you, you do question yourself. You know, but uh, these people never stopped driving me because they always believed in me. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sitting there looking back and saying to myself, without this individual, I don't think I'd have got to that place. With that individual, I wouldn't have got a little bit further. Because, like I said, we, we end up questioning ourselves at time when we shouldn't. But we're human and that's exactly what we do. Now, as a striker, uh, how are you encouraged to actively shape your skills? And can you give some advice to all of the young Canadians watching right now that want to follow in your footsteps and hopefully become a striker? I think, I think as, as a coach, especially a, a young uh, striker, you, you're always encouraged by your coaches to work on all aspects of your game. You know, and I, I think that's always going to be a positive because you always want to improve. And if you don't improve, you know, you're not going to move on to the next level. So have you got your coaches encouraging you? Um, to do better or to work on your weaknesses to make them a lot stronger, that's a massive positive, you know. So when you do finally reach where you have to go to, you know, you can always join those experiences. You know, if, if you ever go to a bad patch, you can always go back to square one. And square one, that's where it all starts, you know, and then we draw on those, on those things that we learn at square one and we move forward. And Andy, earlier in the interview, you mentioned something about just enjoying the game and making sure you enjoy it. And I'm curious if at any point in your career, there was a moment where maybe you weren't enjoying it or you felt like you would hit a bit of a rut and how you overcame that. Yeah, yeah. So I think any sportsman does that. Because, you know, I think that the further you got the ladder, it becomes more and more intense. And sometimes we do forget about enjoying it. You know, in, in, in my case, and no doubt a few of my teammates' case, when you win something, you've got to really celebrate. I think when we won something, we celebrate for oh, no, an hour, two hours, and we forgot about it and we moved on to the next thing. And we look back now and say, oh, I wish I'd have celebrated that more, a lot more, winning the league a lot more, the champions, what, whatever it may be. You know, you've got to bask in those moments because they don't come around all the time. So for me personally, looking back at my career, I wish I enjoyed it more, all my achievements. That's what you've got to do. That's why you work so hard to achieve those things. So when you do achieve them, you've got to enjoy it. And now, Andy, before we let you go, I do want to ask maybe something a little more open-ended. Is there a question that you constantly get from fans that you still get about your career that you think maybe our viewers would be interested in knowing the answer to? Uh, no, not really, because we, we always get asked the same questions, you know, uh, like, oh, when did you realise you're going to be good enough to become a professional footballer? And I always turn around and said, never. You know, because even when I played at the highest level, I want to become better. You know, and, and, and that, that's just it. You know, you can never, ever stand still. You can never, ever believe you've made it. And that, that was my key, to I think, to my success. Even when I was playing at the highest level, I never believed I'd made it. I'd always want to push myself on. You know, because that's what you've got to do to start at the highest level. You've got to work extremely hard and you've got to motivate yourself all the time. And now that you are obviously retired, do you ever sit back and look at your career and just realize how incredible it was? I mean, you give yourself the credit you deserve now in hindsight. No, I, I only look back uh, when we had the lockdown during the COVID period. Otherwise, I'm always trying to go forward. I'm always trying to move forward. And then I, I, I actually realized to myself and said to myself, well, are you... He's an half-decent player, by the way. You know, I, I think that's the first time I've ever admitted to myself that I thought I was half-decent. Otherwise, I, I never thought about it. I, I said, my kids don't really talk about it. and you know, I, I just want to try and help others now you know, to, to look at it and be positive in what they want to try and do. 
Amazing. Well, I would love for you to share for all of the viewers back home a message of positivity, a message of inspiration. There are so many young aspiring players watching right now, so it would be great if you just had a message for them. Whatever I say, it doesn't change. When you're young and you're aspiring to do whatever you want to do, enjoy. You know, because unfortunately, we're not young for long. You know, I, I look back on my career and say to myself, I feel like oh, I've been retired, I think, 14, 15 years now. And it feels like yesterday when I was playing. You know, that, that's, that's the crazy thing. So you have to enjoy it. Enjoy every single moment and play every single game like it's your last. Amazing. Andy, thank you so much for joining us and for taking the time to speak once again to all of the viewers of this year's All State Soccer Show. Thank you very much.